Hello, welcome back to episode two of the Shed the Shame podcast. We are super excited to be here with you guys for another episode. It's going to be super duper fun. Heads up, I am headphoneless because retrograde maybe and none of my <laughs> headphones would work. So you may hear my dog playing in the background. Actually, we had to restart the podcast because it was just not working. <laughs> so I'm Alex Cobal Frakes, um, one of the co-founders of this podcast and super excited to be here with you all today. And I am Alja Lindsberger, co-host of this awesome Shed the Shame podcast. I am the CEO and founder of Ladybox, an organic period subscription box, and um, also started this fun, fun um, fundraising campaign in support of WaterAid and the work that they do in over 30 countries across the world in providing uh, clean water and sanitation for impoverished and mar marginalized communities. So from Menstrual Hygiene Day, which was May 28th, through World Toilet Day, which is November 19th, we are donating funds in support of the work they do via um, sales of our Shed the Shame water bottle. So if you're on YouTube, you get to look at the pretty water bottle that is showing here. Um, and if when you subscribe to um, Lady Boxes, you also get to donate those funds. So um, support Maybe. some clean water for marginalized menstruators, please, Alex. Tell people about yourself. I first, I want to just say, like, I love especially tying in the toilet component because we think a lot about when we talk about menstrual equity, getting access to the supplies that we need, yeah. which is only a half of the equation. And so, really talking mm -hmm. about access to sanitary places to use the restroom, I think is super important. So, I love how this campaign expands on that. It's expanded my own vision of the way I think about menstrual equity. So that was why I, as soon as I got your material, I was like, we're doing something. We have to, like, how can I participate? This is so cool. Um, I am the CEO of the Agenda Period, which is an app and planning system that helps women and menstruators harness the power of their menstrual cycle for their planning and productivity. Putting, making periods cool again and really helping folks live a period empowered lifestyle. So Super excited. I hope you guys got to check out episode one. That was super fun. And again, if you are interested in shedding your own shame, coming on the podcast, we will put links so that you can do that. And today we are talking about first periods. It's going to be super duper juicy, super excited. Um, but first we're going to start with a cycle, cycle check-in. So how are you checking in with your cycle today? I am probably, you know, somewhere between my winter and spring phase. So that's like, you know, menstrual to follicular. I love saying that word. Um, <laughs> I am still not wanting to be around a lot of people, but I have more energy and focus. So feeling pretty good. I love that. Yeah, I can definitely run the risk of burning myself out in that transition. So I love that you're just kind of honoring that time. Super great. I am checking in at the tail end of the luteal phase and I feel it with every part of my body. Oh, like God. I am so tired. Mm -hmm. um, my my babies were crying this morning and I was just like, let's ho I'll hold you. And like, I don't know what else we can do. <laughs> like it was just like, mm -hmm. I felt like there was no more juice left to squeeze, to wring out. <laughs> I was yeah. like, all the juice is gone. <laughs> oh, refuel you mama. Yes. So I actually got some delicious lunch and that definitely helps the refueling yeah. process. So yeah, we're, um, I love cycle check-ins. They just help normalize knowing where we're at in every phase and thinking through how we can support ourselves in all of those phases. So super duper yeah. awesome. So and today you don't oh, know, and if you don't know, that's okay. Um, maybe yeah. you track in some way and, um, especially if you have the agenda app, um, and can track that way, can tell you like all the great ways to optimize your cycles. But it's also okay if you don't know and you're just like, I'm just feeling what I'm feeling. And Exactly. Like before I started this work, I knew that shifts were going on, but I didn't even know there were names for four phases. I was like, right? what? <laughs> I knew like about like menstruation and I've heard the word ovulation, but follicular and luteal, like I kept having it spell checked as wrong 
on like Google Docs. I was like, this is a real word. <laughs> like this yeah. is a real thing. Um, but yeah, if you don't know, that is such a beautiful reminder. Your body will give you a lot of information. And once you start tracking that in some way, you can start to see your own patterns. But if you don't know words for it, if you are confused, there's a ton of great resources that we're happy to help point people to. Okay. But this is part of what the, sh the shame we want to shed is like even knowing these normal bodily functions and processes yep. and being able to understand them. So that's such a great reminder. Awesome. We're talking about first periods. I mean, talk about not knowing. Talking about first periods, yes. Yeah? First periods. You want to go first? I would love to hear your first period uh, story. My first period experience is I didn't even know I was having a period. <laughs> <laughs> I um so this is this was me as like a, an 11 year old in the sixth grade I've been having to do my own laundry since I was like eight years old but at like around my period of time for some reason my mom was like helping me with my laundry and I remember her coming up to me and saying are you on your period and I was like I don't know like I have weird stuff in my underwear, but I'm just like, yeah, whatever, bodies. <laughs> and, and even though like when I was eight years old, they sat me in front of a TV and it talked about like the, uh, the changes my body would go through, you know, with puberty and everything. And I remember some, you know, people talking about periods, but I couldn't comprehend exactly what a period was. So I was just like, oh, we get a dot on our body? <laughs> like when all this like, you know, blood was coming out of me I, I was like uh whatever this is I'm not dying so I must be okay and then my mom you know like she 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 brought that up to me like you know the underwear stuff and she and she was like I, you you've been having your period and I was like oh okay cool so this is like when I need to take out that brown bag that you packed like pads and like extra underwear that's like you know I need to start using that now she's like uh-huh <laughs> oh yeah that was my first period experience it was uh what, what's the word that I'm thinking of but it was just like yeah that's what it was yeah yeah did you how did you feel like having to take that brown bag or the supplies from the bag to school with you was it like chill was it weird do you remember what that was like I don't really remember. I remember the brown bag, like just living in my backpack. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remember having to wear pads because my mom, um, she had had a hysterectomy. So she didn't, you know, menstruate. And so she didn't really teach me how to use tampons or any other period products. So it was just like thick pads that I'd like have to wear. And I'm 11 playing soccer. And, running around with this pad stuck between my legs. And I was, so that part, I remember like not being pleased that I had to wear something else when I'm like trying to be a really good soccer player. Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting point because there's a lot of statistics that come up around like when athleticism shifts for, um, you know, young boys and girls and like, there's a lot around puberty. And I think mm -hmm. there's likely a lot to do with the menstrual cycle in terms of some of that level of comfort and how our bodies change and what we think that means like participation wise you know how that kind of can start to shift things um because I also have like a weird sports moment and I am not a sports person but like <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about that but yeah that's that's so interesting was your mom did it feel helpful or was it pretty much just like minimal info minimal info yeah. Um, it was very minimal info. Like if this whole sh um, episode was about first, like I, my first tampon use was when I was in my twenties and I like, you know, attempted inserting them in a Safeway bathroom because I didn't want to deal with it at home. And so they were, like, I felt lost when it came to my period when I was younger because I didn't get the information that I needed and I and I was like so all focused like about school and soccer that I didn't really care to re do the research either so that's like that was my relationship pre pre-college <laughs> with my period yeah yeah if only you had a lady boss I know. <laughs> well, I mean, the I first like, period. hear about like first period celebrations or like you know first period kits or uh, what was it like the red dot parties? 
I didn't hear about that until my late 20s. And I was like, oh my gosh, I would have loved to have been celebrated or just like been more informed yeah. when I was 11, having my first period instead of just being like, oh yeah, that's, that's what's happening with my underwear. Thanks mom for cleaning them for me. Cause that was like weird for me to do. Yeah. 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 How about you? Oh, so my first period, I had heard about periods from like kids on the bus, you know, <laughs> older friends or like the myths and mythology that kind of floats through uninformed youths, which is why like parents find a way to talk to your children. People who have children in your life, talk to them. Otherwise they're going to get really bad information from other yeah. like 10, 11 and 12 year olds. Which get is a like, little lady box. It has a like a book, box. all the stuff you need to like inform them and celebrate it with them. And yourself, inform yourself. Yeah. If you have some questions, oh, if you've got oh. some gaps, no worries. Like read it first and then share it with her. <laughs> um, yeah. So I knew it was coming. But I got my period in fifth grade when I was 10 before the, the health class. So mm -hmm. I didn't have any of the formal literature yet mm -hmm. from school. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew I was like, oh my God, like I felt bad. And then I like saw blood in the school bathroom and I went and told the nurse and I was just like, I think I started my period. <laughs> and she gave, she was like, oh honey, congratulations. Like that's so cool. And I was like, I don't think so, lady. So she gave me some Tylenol. She gave me some pads enough for the day. Mm -hmm. to tell your mom when you get home. Mm -hmm. And my parents are divorced. So there was always a little bit of like back and forth between households, which was already weird. Um, and my mom and I have talked about this. So I'm not trying to put on blast, but she was not helpful when my first period happened. Um, and she remembers it a little bit differently than I do, which is the funny thing about memories. Um, yeah. But I remember going home and I was like, mom, I started my period. And she's like, okay. <laughs> I was just like, okay, that was already a really weird, like different from the school nurse. And I was like, yeah, do you have anything for me? I need a tampon. That's what I said, but I didn't really know what tampons were. Yeah. Um, and then she's like, there's a box in the bathroom. I was like, okay. So I went to the bathroom and I was expecting pads because mm -hmm. that's what the nurse gave me, but there was a box of actual tampons. And I was like, oh my gosh. mom, I don't know how to use these. And she's like, just read the instructions. I was like, okay so it was like in the 90s so it was like my mom had like the tampons with cardboard applicators Ouch. and I didn't know because I was 10 my reading comprehension was pretty good but you know my intensive vocabulary not so much at that point so I used the tampon and I didn't know you had to take remove the applicator oh gosh because obviously an application means to apply something, but I did not know that you had to remove it. Um, and I was just like, oh, this is very uncomfortable. These things do not work because I didn't remove it. So I was like, nothing is getting absorbed. So I had to like stick with like the, the toilet paper method in the underwear before I got some pads. Cause I was like, it's not working. And it was actually when I was playing softball that summer where I was talking to another 10 year old and we mm -hmm. had to figure it out together. I was like, you know, this is like, it's a, we're both on our period on a softball day. And like, these things do not work. And then we finally somehow figured out together. They had to remove the applicator. Um, one poor you <laughs> cute little 10 year old trying to figure your shit out. And then two, how beautiful it is that like the two of you were open enough to help each other out. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. But I, and I, I think that's like kind of what has been my menstrual experience overall. Mm -hmm. It's like these, these lovingly, but secret pockets with other girls and women and menstruators of like getting the supplies you need. Like yeah. I remember throughout high school, you know, it didn't matter if I didn't like someone, if they said, Hey, does anyone have like a tampon? Like I would look through my stuff and oh, give yeah. them one. Like, it's just like this, this almost like secret bond. Mm -hmm. um while of course still shoving it down their sleeve so no one else could see it or like in the waistband yeah. of your pants yeah. um but there's you know there that's been a recurring theme of like women secretly supporting each other women and menstruators mm -hmm. secretly supporting each other and at least then there, it's, there's a little less loneliness I think in yeah. some of the shame that can be felt so yeah that was that was my first period it was bad and then I knew kind of like that I was one of the first ones like most people don't start until around sixth or seventh grade and so then it was like for almost a whole year like 
like trying to open oh it so gosh. carefully in the restroom so like no one yes. would hear the crinkling of products mm -hmm. um because there's also some of that I think where people would still make fun of each other or just the gossip train of like oh that person's on their period because everyone feels shame and weird about it so yeah cope in all these weird ways so yeah yeah um it's insane like um you know like you're in elementary school or you know like middle school and you're all in a really awkward stage of life trying to like figure shit out and you got some people that are like yeah let's you know band up and be friends and help each other and then you have these other kids that are like snapping young girls you know tra training bras and just like you know laughing at you i don't know it's it's so ridiculous like we're all going through our own stuff please let us all process the way we need to and can we all just be nice and you know be a community with each other because the that's the whole thing around shame is there's this overwhelming sense of isolation and you know fear too but there's isolation in fear because in shame because you feel like maybe you're the only one and you're weird or it's like not normal and so you isolate yourself even more and just like hold it in and then you have all this like sadness and fear and anxiety building up and and it's just I was actually talking with somebody today like the more we can share and connect with each other we all feel so much lighter and brighter with our you know within ourselves and more connected to other people so I just little 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 people little like awkward you know sixth to eighth graders please just be nice to each other you're all going through your own weird stuff all it's all weird all bodies like have like they're sprouting hair in places yes like <laughs> as weird as like menstruation was it i at least knew what that was and we may talk about this in another episode but like cervical mucus around ovulation oh yeah i thought i was an alien like I was like, what is this goop? Like, what is yeah. going, like, what is going on here? Like, what is this? And no one ever told me about, that. I didn't learn about that until I was definitely into college. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is normal. <laughs> but I was oh, like, like, I was like, I can't tell anyone. Babies. This is so weird. This is so weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. even with like um, irregular periods or, you know, clots, period clots and you know people don't talk about that very often and then when you do and you hear somebody else talking about it, it's like oh my god I'm not the only one I feel so much better knowing I'm not alone in all of this like just keep yeah. talking about it don't don't be shy so if this is if you are listening to the podcast and you've never had a period this is a great opportunity to step into allyship and create space safe spaces for people who do have periods mm -hmm. if you have felt shame around your own period we're sending you so much love um, something I did when I got my first period postpartum is I actually threw myself a period party and it was super oh, healing. I love that. So maybe there's an invitation there. If you like, if your period's gone and it comes back, like re-celebrating that initiation again, or even just on a random period saying, I'm going to throw myself a first period party and reimagine and recreate that experience for yourself. So those are just some kind of ideas or tips that you can take away. Um, but I think we, our hope from this episode is you will share your own first period stories. If you want to tag yeah. hashtag share the shame, hashtag first period story or whatever. Um, we would love for these stories to kind of flood spaces and mm -hmm. have people realize and know they're not alone and, and be able to share this community together. So that about hits it for now. If you would like to be on the podcast, please fill out the form. We would love to hear your stories and so that we can just reclaim and move forward together with freshness and lightness. I loved that imagery you were talking about. I'll just know so beautiful. Um, so I think that is what is on offer here when we reclaim these parts of ourselves. So I think those are my final thoughts for today. Anything else from you? Yeah, um, feel free to email us too if you can't find the link. Um, but it we're at podcast at shedtheshame.co and um, just you know, let us know that you'd like to be on the podcast and we'll send you that link so that you can fill out the form. And um, you know, pro tip for parents or even, even for like soon to be or young menstruators, if you do want a way to celebrate um, and it's like all packaged up and ready for you, check out the little lady box on joinladybox.com. And yeah, just 
the more that you can share your story and talk about it, the less alone you feel because you'll soon realize that somebody else is going through something similar as you are. So have no fear in shedding that shame. Heck yeah, I can't wait to someday get my twins uh, each their own little lady box. <laughs> it's so called that at that time, but I'm really excited. And I'm so excited that these things exist and that we can talk about them. Um, and I just also want to highlight, I guess, last thing here is that we know it's still not safe in all parts of the world to talk about these things. So there's a tremendous amount of privilege that we get to bring these stories to you. Um, and so just there is still, there is a lot of darkness and pain here. And that's what we want to help try to break through. So if you feel like helping to chip away at that, we'd love to share your stories. Um, and we just are really honored that we have the safety to be able to share ours with you all. So thank you everybody for listening yes, in. And we'll you. see you next week. Bye. Bye.